It's time to get rid of this and make this work on this. Hi, I'm Rob from Skits Your Genius. In keeping with what I love to do, one of my favorite things is to take Bobcat attachments, strip out all the controls and make them universal so they work on any machine. Today I'm working on their uh, chipper and this was sent to us by one of our awesome customers who just wants me to get it working on his Caterpillar. I've got an ASV that I'm testing it on and what we've done is just kind of open up the electronics here so you can see what's going on and I'm going to do a quick analysis of what needs to happen here and then I'll show you the harness that I made up. And then what we're going to do is you'll be able to buy those on our on our website as a kit. You'll be able to buy the main harness and then whatever harness you're going to need to either run on, on this type of machine or any other 14 pin machines or if you've got nothing we're actually going to have a little battery kit that we sell with our uh, wireless controllers that you can just plug in. So you just be able to snap a battery on the side, plug the harness in and get off to work. And it doesn't matter really what you, what attachment or what machine you connect it to. Everything you ever wanted to know about a Bobcat chipper. I've currently got this one apart. But here's how it all works. Here's the feed mechanism. You pull on this bar and that turns the feed on, allows it to go through. It's handled electrically through this switch here. It's a two, it's a double switch. So one of them allows it to go forward. One of them allows it to go in reverse. And it's all in how this uh, little bracket here engages. You can see these little points here of lift. And that's what pushes on the different switches as it's going through. So if I pull this back, you can see how it pushes here. Push it, see how this comes down and pushes on this one. And so that is your kind of your flip-flop mechanism that allows the uh, allows it to switch direction. Because down here, if you follow the wires down underneath here, there's a couple of solenoids. So this first solenoid right here, this is the solenoid that controls the brake. So you have to apply power to this to get the brake to switch off. Then here, here's two more wires here that goes around the side. And those are the solenoids that control the direction of the flow of the um, of the feeder. So if we come here, inside this box, this is the main drive motor. There's a great big plate inside there that spins. It's got the cutters on there. Here's your chute for angling. Now there's a lot of electronics on this, which I've got torn apart, which aren't necessarily required. This is called a rack system. Here's their can controller here you flip this over this is the rack system what this enables you to do is actually turn the machine on and turn the hydraulics on from standing outside it's really it's not really necessary and it's expensive and of course this one doesn't work so I'm stripping all the electronics out of this one and just making it into a plain old chipper now another really cool thing about this chipper is that this floats and inside here this is actually where your feeder mower is so when you throw something in on this side you'll see the feeds down way down low you see it down low there well when you feed something in that whole mechanism actually rides up and down on top of the branch and that allows it to have a better grip as it's feeding different shapes through so this right here see these springs there's one on both sides this whole mechanism slides up and down Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of all of this. This is garbage as far as I'm concerned. So we just cut it, cut it as close to these crimps as possible. And this literally can go in the garbage, it's worthless. In the case of this one, I think what happened was this blue. And so this no longer worked on a Bobcat. And so they ended up taking this to uh, an auction. And the customer picked this up really cheap because for what this machinery is and how well it works, um, he got a screaming deal on it. And it's all because of... Uh, well, that's about a $1,200 computer that's in there that just isn't necessary. And so we get rid of it. We turn it into a electrical mechanical operation and this thing will last forever. So I'm going to use my orange here as my commons. So I'm going to strip them back a little bit farther. 
these will go together as commons. And then there's one of these on each side, which is your forward and reversing switch. So we've got a total of three spade legs that we're gonna have on here. And these aren't the production harnesses. This is a prototype harness. So I'm using, I'm gonna put some heat shrink on here that I'll put together later on just to cover all my connections. Tug, oh, that failed. Let's try it again here. slide this over top later on and heat shrink it on and that'll protect the, the connection as well and then we'll have a bigger piece that'll go over the whole thing that'll cover the entire connection I don't have access to every machine that's out there. So what you wanna watch for here is if these colors are different, all that matters is that you grab one wire from each switch. So you just look underneath and you can see it and you common them up. So I've got one from this switch and one from this switch and it just happens to be the same color. So I'm joining them up as one because this will be my power coming in and so that I'll have power accessible on both of these. And then this is my output. So when I hit the switch, whichever one this selects, this is mechanically selecting either the, the switch on the inside or the switch on the outside. It's gonna then switch and put power on one of these outputs. So that's all I care about is that I've got a common power coming in and then a split power coming out that gets switched mechanically. I'm gonna slide my shrink tubing over top of here just to protect my connections. Use my little heat gun. You can use an electrical heat gun. I just, when I'm out in the field, this is what I use. You can even use a big lighter if you've got one. All we're trying to do is just seal up this connection here. And then we're going to put another bigger piece over top of the entire connection. So, And I don't plan on the production ones having this, but just in case. so I don't forget later. I'll put this over top right now. So it's ready to go. Then I reach down and grab my harness. How this works, this is my common power coming in. 
it's got two wires on it. And the reason is that I feed back power back to the main brake. So this goes like so. And then you can do whichever one you prefer because um, it depends on how you plugged it in down below. If it's going, if it's not going forward, if it's going in reverse, when it should be going forward, then just swap these two connections. So I'm just gonna slide these down for now just to make sure everything works before I, I shrink tube them permanently. But that's basically what the, the whole connection works like. So now when I operate this switch, So there's the neutral position and these switches are sitting here. So if I want to go, it says pull fully forward for reverse. So I pull it here and you can see it's pushing down mechanically, it's pushing this switch down. And if I want to go the other way, you see how it's now pushing down this one. And then I can also push that way as well. So to go uh, reverse, I can either go fully forward fully in reverse and it takes care of it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the brake and that is to enable us to not have constant current running to a, a solenoid just to keep the thing running. It just makes for more efficient operations. So I'm just going to show you here. Always make sure you've got your arms locked up before you ever climb under. Do not climb under a raw machine like this. Make sure you've got the arms locked. And then all I do here, I've already loosened everything so you can see there's a nut here. I believe this is a 7 8 so I take that the coil comes off and then I spin this out okay there's the cartridge that operates the brake okay and I have this plug that comes in your kit insert that right here now what happens is as soon as I apply hydraulics this thing will start up and I won't have to worry about any electrical so the electrical will only be momentary and it'll be to, uh, to operate the uh, the feeder unit, either forward or reverse. Okay, and so there's my two that I have feeding the, uh, the forward or reverse, and that's it. Okay, so once again, I've got the arm locked in place so it doesn't fall down on me while I'm working on it. Just want to show you the final steps here. I simplified this by getting rid of the brake. So we installed this plug here. We took out the cartridge, installed the plug, and now we only have these two solenoids, which are the directional ones for the feed. So that's all I'm gonna do is just plug these two in. Okay, and I'm gonna run my wire up and out where the uh, hydraulic lines come in. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this joint up inside here and I'm going to tie wrap it. The reason for that is in the future, if he wanted to put it on a machine that didn't have any electrical, he could buy one of our little battery packs and just plug it right into it. So he's not bound by any machine. In this case, this is going to end up on a Cat D series. He's already told me he's wiring what he wants. So I'm going to end up putting a, uh, a 14 pin on it and wiring it for him. So when this arrives, he can just plug it right in. But for the kit purposes, you'll be able to buy it with a 14 pin, or if you've got like an older John Deere or any machine that has no controls or, or electrical controls or any machines that, um, that are say uh, ASV, like this machine, um, that don't have power, then you'll just be able to buy a battery pack and pop it in. The nice thing about that is the battery pack is only running when you're, when you're operating it forward reverse. So otherwise when it's just sitting there and you're not doing anything, the battery's not even, you're not drying off the battery. So that battery's gonna last for weeks before you're gonna need to recharge it. So that's a real plus. So just look for that on the website as well. Okay, we've completed our routing. I've got the main power coming in right here. The reason I, I terminated it here is so that if I do wanna use a battery pack in the future, I can pop it right here. It's really accessible. Then I ran my other control wire up through here, through the existing loop that used to be there where the wire came up. It goes in through this part here. And then there's my three terminations. There's my main common wire where I've put the two together. Okay, and here's my two controls. Now I'm just gonna jump in the machine and make sure that I've got it running in the right direction. And then we're good to go. Okay, I've now removed all of this 
was completely unnecessary. But I also did re remove the brake and all these electronics that are in here, and that's all part of what you see on the ground there. So, you no longer have a safety stop, and that's on you. So any risk taken as far as if you jump inside here and you get sucked through, that's all on you. This has nothing to do with us. All we've done is turn this into a simple chipper, which is like most chippers, uh, with a manual feed and reverse. So as long as you're using this bar here, you should be perfectly safe because you can turn it off. You can stop the feed from running and you can reverse the feed. And what we did here was remove this brake. So we unscrewed this nut underneath took off the solenoid, unscrewed the cartridge, and we put a plug in its place. And so now we don't require any electrical to be running to the solenoid to make this thing operate. It will actually spin up and operate, but we do need electrical to run the feed. So that's why we've got a couple different options to, to run that. So now comes my favorite time. We're gonna take this out, and we're gonna do some chipping and see how it works. Okay, so we've got this set up electrically to operate independently of uh, any machine that it's that it's running on. I want to explain a couple things about hydraulics though. Uh, unless you want to have two people operating this, one person sitting in the cab, another person actually doing the operation, there's different nuances between different machines. So in the case of this our ASV, what we actually have to do is we have to jumper out the seat switch and what that enables us to do is then when we get up out of the cab, we can leave the hydraulics on and everything will keep operating. So what I've done here is I've just put a jumper between F and H. Now you can buy plugs, I believe from ASV. I think we will be offering that soon as well uh, that you just plug in here when you, when you need to operate it. The nuances of that though are, is you lose control of the quick attach as well as the tilt cylinder. So what you wanna do is get it all lined up at the angle that you want it to operate at then install your jumper and then you're able to operate outside the cab so you can use only one hand or one person operation on this now for other brands of machines say you were running just independent with a bobcat uh, you make sure the levers are down uh, you turn on hydraulics and then hit the trigger switch and it'll lock them on uh, john deere i believe is very similar you make sure that you've got the the lap bar down uh, you reach in turn the hydraulics on and then again hit the trigger and it'll lock on uh, for your particular instance, you do want, just want to refer to the manual and make sure that you've, uh, you've gone through that sequence. Sometimes you do need a seat switch installed, sometimes you don't. It just depends on the brand of the machine. Whoa!